Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're doing another football video. It's a, obviously, it's been a big week of football and football results. Um, we've got a lot of things to talk about. Um, I'm here again with Waddle and we're going to do more football stuff like this because it is quite a trending topic at the moment with things that are happening. It's the festive period still and things are building up in terms of fixtures and news. So how are you doing, Waddle? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Been a good weekend of football. How about yourself? A very good week for football for me. Um, just uh, yeah, we'll get onto that because I know we haven't seen each other since. Uh, I think we've even spoke about United playing Liverpool on the weekend yet. Um, on, on, on the, on the, it wasn't the weekend, but you know what I mean. We haven't spoke yeah. about anything yet, so I've tried to keep that. Um, yeah, for this. So firstly, we're going to speak about obviously, Mister Frank Lampard. He's he's gone. Job. He's yeah. fucked off. I don't think I don't think I've said this to a few people. I don't think he deserves a sack at all. I think it was a bad decision. Uh, I was arguing with someone on TikTok about it um, in the comments, <laughs> saying I said I said he doesn't deserve to be sacked. I said I said he deserved to end the season, and I said it's it's not going to do this group of players any good, like because a lot of them bought into were, were black like to, that like Thiago Silva, Havertz, and Werner especially all come to the club just because of him. You know what I mean? Like obviously it's it, it's they're at the club, so they're going to do whatever now. But I think they, you know, a lot of the players, even Mason Mount and the young lads, all believed in Frank, and then like he's gone out the door. You know, it's not, it's not. Uh, I don't think it's right personally, but still, no, it's no, gone. no, it, it's not. And I've seen a lot of Chelsea fans, but I don't think it's like it's either Frank Lampard's fault or the owners' fault. It's never been like people who spoke about. It. It's never been that in between. And um, I think Lampard is to blame for some things. I think, obviously, where they are on the table with the money they've spent isn't good enough. Um, but obviously, there was a lot of promises promised to him, which I don't think he fulfilled. I mean, he was on a three-year contract. But I think it came out today that that third year was additional. Um, so I don't think... I don't, so there's, like, conspiracies going on to say, was he a stopgap? Um, was this project thing just a bit of bullshit? Um, I know there's been a lot of things been released in terms of like he didn't speak to a number of the squad for months on end. Like I think about Rudiger stuff like that and Marcus Alonso, he had a lot of um, many busts up with him. Um, so I know the dressing room was quite split as well. And um, but yeah, I think I don't think he deserved the sack because I think it's a bit like oh it's all going well and as soon as something goes wrong, you pan uh, I think Abramovich is panicked and he's and he's fucked up. I, I mean you have a I think when you know when you said about you know like Mark Alonso and Rudiger being like not talking to him, I think it was more the fact that he knew Mark Alonso was not because Emerson were the backup and Chilwell were the first choice. Mark Alonso were getting nowhere near that squad because he just weren't good enough. That were a fact he would go, he would be sold either in this window or, the, or in the summer. Rudiger, he wasn't a fan of clearly. Uh, even I rate, I rate him, but he, he clearly didn't like him as much as some others. Um, like even the last Tamori, who obviously were were uh, is a fringe player this season, uh, and he's gone to AC Milan now. But like you know, it, it was it was there were certain players obviously he didn't speak to because they weren't good enough, and he, he was clearly planning for their exit. Um, and I think to be honest, I think he did, he deserves a bit of respect to Frank because of last season. He had obviously had the transfer ban. Uh, they were, they lost their best player in Hazard. He had he had to rely on all his young players, and they got the job done, and they got top four. Like that's nothing to be sniffed at. Like, like you know, you, you can't, you know, you can't just say that's that were like a, a fluke. They they worked hard all season, and I think since he's come in, he's got like the most. He's produced the most hat tricks or something of any manager. Like a lot of his players have got him. He's producing like high level performances out of these players, and you can't really turn around and sack him and say it's not performance not good enough because of what he spent. But the reason he ain't doing as well is because of what he spent. If that makes any sense, because he spent the money. He's brought so many players in. Obviously, like Mendy, Thiago Silva have hit the ground running, but there's a lot of others that have, have been on the outskirts and haven't really done as much as they should have. Obviously, Vern is in a bit of a, a tough spot at the minute, but when you bring so many players in, you can't expect them all to gel straight away. It's just not how it works. You need to give them time and that. He should have had, I know you said that third year were additional, but should have given him at least till the end of the season, see what he could do. Yeah. You know, him and his backroom staff, they, they, you know, they clearly, had a, they clearly had a plan. He's a young manager. And he just needed a little bit more time. And like, like look at Klopp. Like I say this a lot. Look at Klopp at Liverpool. Is that you know? It took him five years to to build on that squad and build it all together. Get rid of all the deadwood and get the eleven that he wanted. And you know, Frank deserved that time in my opinion, even though he was a young manager. 
No, I agree. I do I do agree with that. And I think there was a lot of factors that made him become sacked. But there's a lot of things coming out saying like um, the Chelsea board only, I think he want, he didn't want a big managerial group. He only wanted a small, tight-knit group. And Chelsea, all, he had to clarify who he could bring with Chelsea and Roman Abramovich. And um, I know, I, I think Chelsea wanted this consistency in terms of the, the group. So he didn't want, I don't think he wanted the, the sports therapist who was there. He wanted to bring his own, but Chelsea wanted him to bring his own. So it was quite weird the way things panned out. Um, and I agree with you. I do think you should have given to you an end of the season. I mean, when you promised the project sort of thing, because Chelsea's original plan was to have this like ex-player manager thing and build something like a dynasty. But I don't think... Uh, and I think Abramovich is... The thing is, Roman Abramovich, he's got success of what, it, what the way he's done it. He's, he's, I think they've had like 14 managers, something like in 17 years. And that's just the way he's become one of the most successful men on the planet is the fact he's ruthless. And I think... I do understand with the sympathy of Frank Lampard and stuff, and I do understand why he did deserve more. But I think Chelsea fans, I think they're quite split at the moment in terms of obviously they love Frank Lampard, they didn't want him to be sacked. But it's like they are in the they are in the table where they are. And would they react this way if it wasn't Frank Lampard? That's that that's only my thing. I mean, yeah, they wanted well, Sarri. Go on. They wanted Sarri out after he finished third and won a, and won a cup. You know what I mean? It's just a bit. I find it hard to sympathise with Chelsea fans when. They are quite hypocritical in terms of like they are quite spoiled, and I know I'm a, I'm a United fan, but I think they're incredibly spoiled in terms of the 20 years they've had under Abramovich, and and as soon as <clears> something <throat> doesn't go the way they do for all the prize out the prem sort of thing. Yeah, well, the the uh, what the rumours are that Tuchel, Thomas Tuchel's coming in, obviously ex Dortmund and PSG, and the pro, the thing is that I've I've seen him in past, and he has he has a tendency to fall out with the board or the the owners. And yeah. that's not a good sign if you're coming into Chelsea because if you fall out with Bramovich, you're gone. You just you're gone. And if you like, Frank Lampard might have had a few words to say to him and stuff, and a few a few like you know disagreements. But at the day, you're a Chelsea like legend. He's a Chelsea legend. You know, I saw a thing on Twitter and it showed um, it was like a like a spreadsheet and it said the number of words get, uh, sent to you know in a letter to each manager when they got sacked. Mourinho got 16 words. Frank Lampard got like 240 odd. And it yeah. said it's give categories of what they included. Frank Lampard's welcome back to Stamford Bridge. They wished him well in future and, you know, they thanked him for his contribution. Mourinho didn't get any of them. He literally just got, you are sacked, pretty much. And like, that shows that Lampard obviously was respected even by Abramovich, but he just wants to, he doesn't want to see his club that far down the league table, which I do respect as an owner. You've got to, you know, you've got to realise when, when you when things need changing. Even if you have, a, you know, like an emotional tie to a to a manager, you know, it happens. Stuff like that does happen. Like like it'll happen with Dyche at Burnley eventually. But you know, and it'll be sad. But I think Chelsea fans, I think, well, majority think it's the right decision. You know, at the end of the day, because it it will give the squad a little bit of a lift, even if you know, even if the players are are or didn't want him to be sacked. I just, I just think you've also like there's, there's obviously like two sides to it, but you can also look at over in Manchester with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. It's like he's had fucking, he's had turbulent times at Man United, but they've stuck with him and they are where they are now. That's what I, I think when you go, when, when you want to go down this route of having a project and building something for the future, you are um, inevitably going to have times when you're going to be down in the table because that consistency needs to be built within in a, within a team. And your style of play needs to come across within a team. It, it, could, it could take years, and that's what happened with Frank Lampard. He needed that extra bit of time. But again, I'm on the fence of like it's not Frank Lampard's fault, and it's not just the Chelsea board's fault. I think it was a, a, an accumulation of things, like a breakdown. I know, I know there was like all the breakdowns in communication and stuff like that. But um, in terms of Thomas Tuchel, I don't know what to expect from him. Um, he's, he's. I know, I know, he's, he's, he got quite a high. I think he's at sixty odd percent win rate at um, Dortmund. I don't think he won the league, but he won a cup. Um, he's a very good coach, and and he won the. He won, I think he won two leagues in a PSG, but anyone can win the league in PSG. And we got into a Champions League final, but it was a very dull Champions League final. Um, I think he's a very. Dis- they didn't um, that season as well, really. If you watch the performances, they didn't exactly, you know, light the world on fire. They they, they were scraping through that that Champions League tournament, and they come up against possibly the best, the one of the best teams I've ever watched in in Bayern Munich. You know. I think, in, like you say, in a PSG, if you don't win the league, this, you are a shit manager at the end of the day. Um, and 
he had some he had the best players in the world, like two of the best players in the world there, some some other great players, you know. And then you you're gonna to come to Chelsea and you've got it helps that he's German, he's got obviously it might it might help Havertz and Werner a bit more like in communication because obviously they speak English very well, but that might, that that sense of like, you know, like you know, he's he's one of them. He might he might just get him clicking. You never know. You know his style of play. He's definitely different to Frank's, um, and hope, possibly coming from PSG with how attacking they they are as a team might help. You know Chelsea get get firing again and get you know actually demolish teams, which I think I think is what I expected them at the start of the season in my predictions. To be fair, I mean Chelsea have come out and said it's not because of Havertz and Werner they brought a German coach in, but I think the Athletic said. Behind, they've got a source behind the scenes said they do want to help. There's a, there's a, there was a report saying like he's been brought in to help Timo Werner, Havertz, and others, but there's only one more like German player at Chelsea, and that's uh, Rudiger. Rudiger. So I don't understand why they sit like Rudiger instead of others. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. the, the act of, like Germany is like populated with 600 people, and they like, like they, 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 they know each other. But I just think I don't think it's gonna well, make a difference. Yeah, in Thiago Silva as well. Yeah, yeah, in 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 in, in Thiago Silva, and I think that how does help. But I just think Werner just reminds me of, of, of a player like I don't know, like I think he was misscouted in terms of like what they wanted from him. I think they expected him to be a clinical finisher off the left, and but when I've seen him, when I've seen him the Leipzig game, the Champions League, when he played Tottenham in both legs, I saw him play against. Um, he did last season. I can't remember, but I've seen him play the Champions League a few times. It takes him a few chances to score. He's quite, he's not clinical, but he needs a few chances. And I think the argument of him or Frank Lampard playing him out of position is the reason he's got low confidence. I mean, I wa- I've watched quite a lot of Chelsea this year, and Werner gets a lot of chances in, in, in a game. He gets yeah. in a lot of positions to get a lot of chances. I don't he had that, he had that one that were uh, he were right. I can't remember who played, but he was right in front, of, literally on the goal line, and he managed to miss it and hit the bar. Yeah, like yeah. I would just when I saw something like that, there was that, and there was. Did they, I think it was against Fulham. He put he literally broke away on the left and he cut inside onto his right foot and, the, and he hit it against keeper. I was like, that is that is literally that that is Timo Werner. That's what he should be finishing last season. Last season he'd been finishing that, but you know, and then he got a penalty saved against Plymouth, not with Plymouth, where they played, Luton. Uh, you know, it was an awful penalty. You know, if you're a striker that is, if you had scored, you know, for a while and you're in bad form. Hit it down the middle. Hit just hit it down the middle. You've got a goal then, and you can hopefully build on it. You know, it, it, I do. I really feel for him. I do because he's been playing out of position all season. He needs to be down the middle, or he needs to because like when he was at Leipzig, he had a you see Poulsen, and he's like six foot four. He has a big man with him. You know, if him and Giroud play up front together, it might help him a bit more. But I don't think Giroud's the same type of player as you know. He's not as he is a physical presence, but he's not as much as like you know. Like a Lukaku or or anyone like that, um, but I saw him links with Haaland, and imagine Werner and Haaland up front. That would be absolutely lethal. I think it, I think it'd be amazing. But I can't see Haaland going to Chelsea if they don't get in the Champions League. And uh, no, I do. Like, I agree with that. Finishing this like little Chelsea bit off. Do you think they're going to get top four? Um, no, I really Neither don't. Do I. Neither do I. I think you've got I'm... you've got too many teams that are fighting for that that are better than them. Like I, I think, think I think Leicester, I think Leicester, Leicester United, yeah. Liverpool will will turn it around, uh, and City. City. I think I think, yeah, City, I think City are my ones to win the league. To be honest. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll move on to it. We'll move on to Man United, Liverpool now in the FA Cup. Because actually, we can focus on both legs if you want. We can focus on the Premier League game and we'll focus on the FA Cup game and how they differed. I mean, other than that, I was impressed in terms of like usually against these teams. We have we, we we sit back and let him like come on to us. I think we went for so Liverpool and I think I think we were the better team that night. Liverpool had their spells on top, but I think we handled them well. And but I know there were two two sloppy goals that gave away. I mean we we let Salah have so much space for that first goal when he went when he letting him behind. So, and we just kept giving Firmino so much space at the edge of the box to play through to Salah. But I think apart from that. I think I think seventy percent of the game we were on top, and I think that's what impressed me the most was the fact we actually played well and beat a big like the champions. Yeah. You know what I mean? So also, I mean, you, you're um, you you I've been really impressed actually. We like you say your movement um, for players like like Mason Greenwood. To be honest, he's had a quite a slow season. You know, you know compared to last, and 
him actually like his off the ball movement. I'm very impressed with. I think I think Cavani's helped him a hell of a lot because I think Rick, I think it was the game against Fulham. One of one of the chances Cavani. I think he hit the post eventually. And if you watch Better. his movement, you start you, you start from your own box and he moves and into play. He starts every single move and he works it forward with everyone, puts it out wide and then he hits the post. And I think having a player like Cavani who can teach you a player like Greenwood. Who, who, at the end of the day, Greenwood for me is like he's a centre forward, he's a striker. You know what I mean? He, he's through the middle better. He's both he's both footed. He, he can work that that middle channel and stuff. But if you have Cavani who, who's so experienced, you know. He's been around for so long. He's been so good, and he's at the minute, he's actually been playing really well, helping a player like Greenwood and even Rashford. He'll probably help Rashford a hell of a lot, even though they are Rashford's more of a different player now, playing off the left. Um, I think I've been really impressed with Greenwood that game. You know, his, his goal was fantastic. Rashford, his pass and his and his goal, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You know, I thought I, I, really he, I thought I thought he was man at match to be honest, but I don't know why they didn't give it him. They give it Pogba. Um, but I thought Rashford man at match. He, the point Pogba has been good, but to be honest, I thought he was more like a six out of ten that game. He were he weren't fantastic, but he weren't awful. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I thought Rashford were, were best player on pitch. Um, the way uh, I think I love Marcus Rashford. I think everyone who knows me knows he's probably one of my favourite players. But I think the only criticism I have of him is, is sometimes his decision making isn't the best. I think he's only he's still only young, which people forget. He's only twenty three. He's, he's got years to develop yet, but. I think it, sometimes he, he, he releases a pass, releases a pass too late. Sometimes he doesn't pass the yards onto the ball too much. Sometimes he, he should be dribbling at people and he, and he doesn't. But I think that game, I think that's what happens when you play him in, on the left. I think I said to you, um, when he played against you, he played on the right and he wasn't right. effective. I, I, he he, 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 we shut him down way too easy. We knew what he was going to do. He got the assist, but... Um, I think when he's on the left, he can go both ways. He can cut inside. And I think he will he gives players um, so much trouble. I think, but because Pogba's best position is like a left midfield role, you can't play him both on that side. But I think play, Pogba playing that eight or a six that he played against Liverpool, he did really well. He won the ball back for both goals. I think what it is now, what, because you've got a fit and firing Paul Pogba, that is going to, I think that is going to help us fire us to that title contention. And I think... What what I'm seeing now is a team growing in confidence week on week, and I think the more I think that was a hurdle for us against Liverpool. I think because Oli Oli has typically struggled struggled against Liverpool, and there's been this thing about us this year saying we haven't really beat a top team. I think that is a mental hurdle for us this this year to like beat Liverpool, and I think going I think that has basically I think their confidence and the lack of goals may cost them. I'm not saying I think they will get top four, but I think it could cost them in terms of if they don't get top four. And I think they are fighting for a a European, a European place now where a few weeks ago they were fighting for the league so I think in comparison to the league game I think that that, that were two teams sounding each other out I think both teams didn't know what to expect I think Liverpool didn't know if United were going to come on full throttle with where we are with, where we were in the league I think United are a bit scared I think United showed them too much respect in terms of like yeah the champions but they had so many injuries we should have rinsed them in terms of the, 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 the defence Rashford were offside seven times um but yeah, I think the two games are polar opposites, and I think going into the game tomorrow against Sheffield United, it's it's so good to like to have a win against Liverpool and to progress through the cup. And I think we've got West Ham next, and I think this this United team work on confidence and consistency. And I think if every game they work it game by game, and they don't take games for granted because that's what they used to do. They used to think this is a lower team, we shouldn't run as much. But I think if Ollie drills into, them, we could win this league, and I think. It's been such a shit and weird season. Um, I think anything could happen, really. Yeah, I think to be honest, I think this season you need like like the, the nil nil against Liverpool. I personally think you should have gone for the kill on that game. Like there is a risk that you go for the kill and then you get countered and you lose the game. But with the way they were playing, I think I think the way forward would have been to attack them. Just you know, like you did, and they were against obviously. They come off a, uh, a loss against us, um, and then playing you. I expected United to win. Um, you know, I, th- I think Pogba playing so well, he could he, he he was able to sit in that deeper role. And the problem with Pogba, wherever he goes, is that if he play if if he's not playing confidently, he won't play well anywhere. You know what I mean? He can't. He just can't do it. And I think he needs that kick up the arse to deflect. Because if he's playing in a deep role alongside a defensive midfielder, he needs to do some defensive work. He can't just let the other guy do it and then play off him. You know what I mean? Like, it helps if you've got like an energetic player next to him. But 
he's so lazy sometimes that he doesn't track, you know, and that's what you need out of your DMs. So that's why he has been playing on the left. Obviously, that, that then causes Rashford to be either put on the right or sometimes up front, not often, but he does. You know, I think, I think to be honest, I think Pogba does need to go in the summer now because you're hindering Rashford's development, Greenwood's development um, by doing that. And if you can if you can go back to that four of Rashford on left, Greenwood on right, or whoever you get on the right, Martial up front and Bruno uh, in the ten, I think I think you'll be fine, you know. Um, but if I, like, I know you're not up, you're not like hyping it up yet, but you are in a title race now, and uh, I think you are. You will need players like Pogba to keep consistently playing as well as they are. And McTominay, McTominay and Fred, I think you should need a shout out. They've been fantastic for you. I've been so impressed with both of them. But Tommy is probably one of my favourite players in the league and he plays for United, which is disgusting. But I, I love him. I think, he's, I think he's fantastic. For me, Fred especially, I think he's had quite a tough time at Man United. I think he's had so much stick when he came from Shakhtar. But I think in the last year, he's been probably where I put, one of our best players. I think uh, ever since he's got that consistency under Oli and he's got use of the Premier League, it's very rare you get a left-footed DM. And it's, uh, it, yeah. it, opens, it opens so many channels when you want to pass out through the back into him because he's on a different body angle, stuff like that. So it's, it's really it's a good asset to have and he's quick. He's decent on the ball. He reminds me of Ander Herrera. I mean, like, I in wish the way, I had... In the way, like, you know, he's just like a, like a pit bull. He'll track players, he'll, he'll crop them, he'll do what... You know, he will chase the game and he'll, he'll keep you in it for a while, which I, I was really impressed with. To go back to that point that you're speaking about the Premier League Liverpool game and we should have gone for him more... You could argue with the fact that we should have won that game. I mean, Bruno had a free kick that just went past the post. Pogba he had another had chance. chance. In the, Pogba had a chance. And you could argue, like, that's to, that if we converted them chances, people are looking at different ways, saying, oh, they got it spot on. But I think getting some fine margins, and I think it also shows the progression under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in terms of, like, we are going away from Liverpool now thinking we should have beaten where 18 months ago we're like, yeah, we need to sit back here because they're, like, a lot better team than us. And I think you could argue, yeah, they've got all these injuries. But like I've said before, even under, even when Van Dijk and um, the other one were playing, who's injured, the other, the other one, even when they were playing, they were, they were getting beat off Aston Villa. They were conceding goals to Leeds and stuff like that. So it's not like, oh, Van Dijk's gone. Um, they're conceding lots of goals. They were doing it anyway when they were there at the beginning of the season. And to the, the tail end of last year, they were struggling quite a lot. So I think it. I think it's just returning to title for Liverpool. I think after two like insanely year, insanely mad years of like 90-odd points and I think that's just what's happening now. People are returning to time. I mean, Liverpool, I think from now on, will be a top three to champions team. I don't think they're going to be dominating every year. I think they'll just go back to what they were before, which is um, from fourth to fifth. And I think no one's going to run away with it. And that's just my opinion. Obviously, people have different yeah. ones. But I think that's just them returning to time. And I think in terms of us, I think we are progressing as a team. I think we are currently... In, in that top three teams now, I think it was for a while, it, um, it was Chelsea and Tottenham. But I think now, I think I could be speaking too soon. It could just be a good run. But um, I think what I've seen and, and the mentality shift in terms of like, we could, we're going behind in games. We've, we've gained 21 points in the Premier League from going behind. I think that's such like, that just shows the mentality that Bruno Fernandes has brought into this team. And we will speak on Bruno Fernandes actually, because I've seen so much slander on this man through social media. And I'm not having it. I've um I've defended this man to the fucking hill and back in terms of like he doesn't do it against the top teams and stuff like that. And I've always said like, well, last season when he came in, he got the assist against City. Um, he got the assist against Chelsea. It's just this season he hasn't done it. But um, I, in fact, I'll argue that he did it against Everton, and they are a t- in my in my opinion, they are that was an important game. He's done it in the Champions League when it's an important game. It's just because he hasn't scored against the big six in the league. Um, he's not a world-class player. <clears throat> when he is a world-class player, in fact, he's got a higher FIFA card than Kevin De Bruyne. So, fuck that City fans, because he is... He is going off season in... now. Oh, fuck it then. He is the number one player in the Premier League. Fuck you. He is. He's, 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 he's the best. He's the best. He's more consistent. He is. He's, he's the best. Harry Kane as a player, he, is he not? Let's, in fact, I'll get his stats up. That was a match at the end of the day. He scored five more goals. than ha- He's got five more goal involvement than Harry Kane since February since he came in. And Harry Kane's second. So, I think he's the best. I think, I've, I've not seen a, a player like, influence a team like that ever. Like, there was Cantona, but I'm too young to have seen Cantona come to Man United. But, um, 
I've never seen a player come into a team and like, elevate them the way he has. I think that his, his leadership skills, the way he's involved in everything, even when he's not scoring, he's, he's in, he's in, he's in goal, his goal contributions, stuff like that. I think he's so good, man. And like people have come to the point now where if he's not scoring or assisting, they're having a go at him. And I think that just shows how good he is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do defend him quite a lot, but there are there are some times where I have to say I have to stop you over harping him. It's yeah, like I don't... he's a good he's a good player. He is a good player, and I, I, do you know what? There's an underrated side to his game. Like you said about the leadership and stuff, he shouts at players like he gets mad when people make mistakes, and he tracks back a hell of a he's lot. A worker. Like, he works. So he, hard he, if he lose, if he loses the ball, which he does, he does quite a lot. He does lose the ball a fair bit. He'll always track back and try and cover his mistake which I do appreciate because the amount of players that lose the ball and they, they throw their arms about, they huff and puff, and then they start running back. You know, it's, it's pathetic. But it, it, does do, it does do a fair bit of work. Uh, but, yeah, I just don't... I just, I just need to stop you over half in it. I just don't think, like... like my, my, my granddaddy doesn't, like, pay attention to much football. He, well, he loves football, but he doesn't understand in terms of, like, how people these days view players. And he's very hypocritical. And he's compared... He, <clears throat> I think he's even said he's like a, not a phenom, but he's like a, he's like a generational sort of talent. And I, 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 that's, the only, that's the only way I can describe him because the, it's the way, it's his goal involvement. It's, it's the way he's involved in everything. I have not seen a player since Cristiano Ronaldo for us, who plays for us, who plays for us, involved in so many things and his numbers. Like people, like these are the FIFA football fans, the next gen fans who want more than just stats. They want to see if a player plays, if he looks nice when he plays, He's better than that player. Like people saying Adama Traore is better than Rashford because he he, he he gets more in build up play. But for me, it's all about it's all about numbers. It's all about the output. And I think he's he's got nineteen goals and I think he's like nine assists this year. I think that's just mad season he's in a midfielder. And for me, I don't think I know De Bruyne's done it on a more consistent level over in the Premier League. And I think in a few years' time we'll be looking at Bruno Fernandes in in a different way because he's only just come, he's been here for like a year. And I do agree, sometimes United fans do, like, like I just said, Denny's the best player in the league. I, I stand by that. But I think it may take a few more years for us to, to be able to, like, physically back that up because he's only been here a year, if you get my gist. Mm, yeah. Right, I think we should move on from United. Stop me talking about Bruno. Yeah, I mean, we are going to discuss um, the injuries, um, recent injuries of Kevin De Bruyne and Jamie Vardy. And it is kind of slow on Man United because I think it, does benefit them in terms of like going for that title because yeah. people have been putting City as their favourites and I, I said City is my favourite in the title um, even though sometimes when, when we do win a game like a Liverpool I did say we're going to win the league but I retract that statement I don't want to jinx it um, I think Kevin De Bruyne is a massive miss for City I think um, I think you saw the other night I think when he comes off when he comes off the pitch it's a massive difference and City's issue beginning of the season was scoring goals. They were keeping clean sheets, but scoring goals for them was a, was a massive issue. Um, but I think without Kevin De Bruyne, they lose that creativity. I know they've got Phil Ford and they've got Bernardo Silva, but they're not, not on that level in terms of like that. But when they play them better oppositions, they haven't got that player to grab the team, drag the team by the scruff of the neck to um, score goals. And they struggled that with Kevin. We've struggled with that with Kevin De Bruyne in the team. I think they've shown up that defence with Ruben Diaz because he's, he's been a great sign, actually. He's, been, he's gone quite underrated how good he's been um, and John Stones. But I think City may struggle to score goals in the next few weeks without Kevin De Bruyne. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, well, they've got, they've got Gundogan who's been playing Harvey's skin recently. He's been great. You know, I, think, I think the problem is for City, they need to get the strikers back firing. Like, you've had, Hayes has been back for a bit. But I don't know if Aguero's still out, but he's been he's been missing for so long. Like you need in seasons like this, especially the way it's going, we are up and down. It is anyone can draw, or lose to anyone, you know, anyone can beat anyone. You need someone like Aguero who is just gonna sink chances. You know what I mean? And you need to, yeah. you need to sink teams because they're leaving it so late. Like Villa, what a game that! Honestly, I speak about that for a minute. That's one of the best games of football I've watched in quite a long a long time. Like. Literally, it was nil nil until what were it? It was so late, like eighty second, eighty fifth minute or something. Like, what, oh um, my god! 
What I'd like to say is, well, I watched a bit of talk sport the other day about him talking about a game, and they were saying we always knew City were going to win it from the off. And I'm like, you didn't know, did you? Because no. Villa had a lot of chances, and they were saying City were the better team. But I think <clears> they were quite even in terms of the way they played. I thought. Oh well, yeah, I, I think I think a draw was was uh, the right would have been the right uh, result. Like, you, I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, Bertrand Traore touches it round De Bruyne, yeah, like De Bruyne, comes up from yeah. Emi Martinez. He touches it over him, then takes it down again on his knee and runs it. I'm like. If you smash that with any sort of power, it, it might go in. Like, what a chance it were. Honestly, I, would, I was sat here, just my jaw dropped. I was so excited. Jack Grealish, the amount of chances. I, I, I don't actually, I haven't seen the number, but how many chances he created was nuts. Like, he was involved in everything. Like, Villa, Douglas Louise, he's, he's such a fantastic player. If City don't, don't activate their buyback clause in with underrated. the league, he's so underrated. He's so good. Like, that John McGinn, fantastic player. He, I think he, he smashed the post or the crossbar. Like they had so many chances. Ollie Watkins had a few chances. You know what I mean? Like they, they've been so good. Then, then they had El Ghazi coming on, who's in good form. Like if if that had been nil nil, it would have easily been the best nil nil I've ever watched. Yeah, I mean we're gonna. I think we need to touch on that goal. The first is it the first one. Um, the Bernardo Silva goal. The offsides. Yeah, and I re- there was a Sky Sports thing today. Um, <coughs> referees have asked for the offside rule to be changed so that doesn't happen because um, there's been a lot of like like confusion over it. I'm still confused over it. I don't understand how it was a goal um, because he was offside. And I, I understand the rule changes, but he's physically offside. You know what I mean? I think I saw how it, were off, uh, how it weren't offside. They said, because when it comes down, I can't, I can't remember, is it, is it Mings? He takes it down. Yeah, he's, because, he's, because he's touched it before Rodri's t- touched him or the ball, Rodri's then classed as not offside because of Villa play, because he's already, you know, interacted with the ball. Yeah. That makes it not offside, even though I thought, I just think, I think, I thought it was offside. I, I still think it should have been offside. And if the rules change, then yeah, it's it's a good thing. Um I think City might have, nicked, might have nicked it at some point, but Villa had enough chances to, to nick it as well. You know, yeah. like I said, I, I still think it should have been a draw, but if the rules change, then that, that's, that can only be a good thing. Yeah, I think uh, for Villa going on, I think if Villa win all their games, and they've got a lot of it now because they've, they're off for a few weeks of COVID, I think Liverpool could sit down to like eight. Um, because I think I think um, Villa go four. There's a few teams that have got games in. I know City have got a game in hand on you. Uh, Villa have got two games in hand on the people above them, and there's someone else. It might be Everton. I think Everton have got yeah. a couple of games in hand as well. Who and they're 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 up there. Um, so they, they could, there can be quite a lot a lot of teams dropping down slowly. Obviously, they need to win them games. Um, yeah. But I think Villa have got got the team to to win both. The, I don't. I can't remember who their games in hand are against. I don't know if we. No. We not. I don't think we're one of them. Uh, no. But. Um, but yeah, I think I think I don't think we have them in a couple of weeks. But you know they, they've got all the they've got all the firepower to 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 win both them games and and a good squad. So we'll have to see. It's um, gonna be this season's gonna be so interesting. So Villa's two games in hand, Spurs mm-hmm. and Everton. Right. Well, and and City's game in hand, Southampton. Who who's game in hand? City's get City's game in hand against those. He's Southampton. Yeah. Hard games. Very interesting games. Uh. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll touch on these this week's fixtures. So we've got tonight, Tuesday. We're not going to mention we're on Liverpool. Oh yes, we are. I forgot about that. <laughs> so, um, for you guys who don't know, uh, at, the, at the time of Burnley Liverpool, we were all doing a quiz, and um, one of our friends is a Liverpool fan. Obviously, I'm a Man United fan, as you can see with the pictures behind me. Um, it was one of the best nights I've ever had. Um, I've been a United fan in recent times. Um, he had to mute his mic and um, leave us for a bit because I was just laughing. You were and I was chatting. Off. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Burn. I think I think Burnley performed really well. I think obviously Liverpool had all the chances in terms of like they were just crossing the ball and crossing the ball. And I think I was saying to um, saying to one of the day, I was like, that's what Burnley love doing. They love defending. And I think if you're going to cross the ball into the box, you're not going to get any 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 luck because that. You've got Ming, you've got me and Tarkovsky just love heading the ball away. I think yeah. that 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 just shows maybe that there's a drop off from Liverpool. They just seem dejected and tired and running out of ideas. And 
Yeah. I think that just might be them as a cycles, maybe coming to the end as a team. Because I think there was a stat on Sky Sports saying, I don't think a championship winning team, um, Strike Force, has been together for more than two seasons. I think this is their fourth season together. And I think... Yeah. Um, I think it's just naturally an end of a end of an era for him. You know what I mean? It just. I well, think I'll, I'll talk really to well. a, I'll talk to my mate Fergie. Uh, he's a Liverpool fan. All his family are, and um, he said he literally they were all saying said what uh, two of the front three need selling. Ideally, he said he said Salah and uh, Firmino need selling this summer. Uh, Keith Marne midfield. A lot of them need to go. You know, I need to regenerate uh, uh, rebuild. Sorry. Um, and he said it needs to needs to happen now. You know, it says that, that this is the end for him. Like he said, even like the, everyone knows to attack down their right hand side because Trent he just gets turned. Dwight McNeil tur- just turned him inside out. Said he sent him to shock to get him. You know, get him an energy drink or something like ridiculous. Like <laughs> they're not going to attack down Robbo's side because Robbo is actually quite a competent defender. But Trent just he's just so such a liability. Like going going backwards. Like he's like the opposite to Wan Bissaka. He, he, he just can't defend. He, he's just so bad. Um, and yeah, like, like Eric Peters, when he come out, like I was scared. When Charlie Taylor, like I didn't even realise Charlie Taylor had gone off injured. And people said it were were a bad injury. But when, and I saw Eric Peters had come out. I, I was worried. I, I said it on the call. I was worried. And then Eric Peters had Salah in his back pocket. He took him home with him. Like he, he were absolutely done. He had no chances. And he absolutely tore him apart. It was class. He knocked, he knocked on Luke Shaw's door and asked if he could borrow him. Yeah, exactly. Like even Luke, uh, Eric Peters and Luke Shaw have both absolutely done him in the last couple of games. So, yeah, I think I think um, yeah, I think it was a great result for him. I think that Sean Dyche, young clock thing, the tunnel, he sh- and the interviews and all the stuff he's been saying about Sean Man United, he's absolutely knocked his head off. No, I know. Um, I think he's just showing uh, he's cracking. He is actually crack. He's, he's a little bit rattled. He's, I think he's like um, and a number of things. You've got um, FSG, um, the owners not giving him what he wants. You've got your closest rivals. Who are above you now competing for the title? Um, it's it's the worry in the fact they're not scoring. I think this is the first time in his reign, and I know in his early seasons they were they were not that good, but this is the first time in his reign at Liverpool. I'd say he's in quite a lot of trouble. Not not being sacked, I don't think they'll sack him, but I think in terms of where they're going to finish in the league position, and I think Klopp needs to be careful because what 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 made Ferguson like the best? He knew when to get rid of players, and even even yeah. when. They weren't even over the hill. They weren't even on the under decline. But he just knew at that point, just before they were declining, when you could sell them to get rid of them. Mm. And I, I think they may have held on to this front three a little bit too long. And I think um, a few of these players do need to get sold because they just hold on to them because it's one of them things. I think they've looked at it and gone, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah. But I think teams do need refreshing all the time. I think that's what Jota were brought in for. But um, I think, again, Salah or Mane needs to, needs, needs to be sold. I don't get the notion of keeping Mane because he hasn't scored in over two months. But I Salah's think he, I, don't, I think I think he's got the best of like he's got like I think if you I think you, if you sell Salah to like a Real Madrid or someone that will back because Real Madrid will buy him, yeah. you get more money for him than Mane. Mane yeah, is yeah. a better, I think he's a better player than Salah all round. For me, you know, he's he's, he's he needs to go, but apparently. There's big rumours. Obviously, if they get in the Champions League, that Mbappe is going to be signed. Yeah. Like, apparently, that's why they're not buying anyone in January because they're saving all the money for the summer. Uh, apparently, if they, they could possibly send one of Salah or, or Firmino, no, uh, yeah, Salah or Firmino the other way in like a bit of a, you know, as a bit of a, to broach a deal. So, um, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's a weird time, to be honest. Uh, it's entertaining, but, this season's just up and down all round. Like anyone can win this league, and anyone can, you know, beat anyone. So, yeah, I think it's. Uh, we'll touch upon the, uh, the 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 fixtures um, tonight, tomorrow, and the weekend. So we won't go in, we won't go into all the games. Let's go in, let's cover the key ones. Uh, we've got Southampton Arsenal um, at quarter past eight tonight. Again, um, yeah, because it was in the FA Cup one the other day, um, which was a oh. weird fucking game. The fact Arteta, let's not forget, right. I haven't watched South, it, so... Southampton are better than Arsenal. Southampton yeah. are better than Arsenal. But Arsenal looked at that and think, yeah, fuck it, I'll play a weakened team against a team that's better than me. Um, so, he, he, I don't get it. Um, but I think... Because Arsenal have done this little run of they of winning games and I think they haven't played a team yet in the league who's actually going to challenge them. I think they've played West Brom, they've played Palace and Palace is probably the only team they've played with a bit of quality and they drew with them. So, I think tonight we'll see what Arsenal, if they are actually getting in a bit of form. Um... But yeah, it's gonna be a tough game. I think I, I imagine Southampton because they are at home may may win that with 
with Danny Ings, Che Adams, all that. I like watching Southampton. I think they're a great side. And I think with the manager in Hassan Hull, who could, I think, eventually may progress onto a, bit, a bigger club, um, I think they've got a great thing going on there. And the way they press, the way the system, it's a very much system team like Klopp at Liverpool. But I think they are great to watch. They're like a Liverpool 2.0, if you get if you get what I mean. Yeah. I think, and to be honest, I think um, I th- they, they play 4-4-2, which is quite interesting to me. Like They play with the two strikers, and both very good strikers. But even if you play Walcott, I, I really like Walcott through the middle. I think he's he's a lot better than he were on the wing. Because uh, he can set up the, the strike partner, if it's Che Adams, if it's Danny Ings or whatever. Um and they have got some real talent in that team. James Ward Prowse is one of my favourite players in the league. I think he's fantastic. Underrated. Um, he is a dead ball specialist. He's got, is it the highest free kick percentage? Uh, he, he scored, he scored the most league. free, he scored the most set piece, go, set piece goals in Premier League history. Yeah, yeah that's mental. Well, that is mental. But, you know, um, even players like Ryan Bertrand, uh, Bednarek, Vestergaard, you know, their back line is actually really a. Uh, Really underrated. Walker Peters. When he was at Spurs, I thought, oh, he's an average right back. He's not not brilliant at anything. And then he's gone to Southampton. What a, what a right back he is. Like when they played Liverpool, he was fantastic. You know, one of the best players on pitch. Um, they just they they are brilliant. And when they lost Hoiberg uh, in the summer, I thought, oh, that's that's their midfield done. But it, you know, Romeo and uh, there's someone else. Who I can't remember yeah, the other one. Diallo. Diallo from yeah. PSG. Who? He's called Diallo. He's from PSG. They bought him. All right. No, I don't even know who that is. But, uh, yeah, when they, when that team just, it's just so, like you say, it's a system. And they play so well. You know, I've been really impressed with them this season. And, you know, I, I hope they do get it. I hope they stay at top half at the table and may, maybe push up a bit. Yeah. Um, and as well tonight, we've also got West Brom versus Manchester City. Um, it would not surprise me if tonight um, Big Sam just shuts up shop and says... No, 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 De Bruyne play for us. You know what I mean? Just try and break yeah. us down. And well, let's be honest. I don't know if you watched the game they played in the FA Cup the other night against um, Michael Michael Duff's team. Um, uh, Cheltenham, Man City, yeah. Cheltenham. I'm not being funny, but they struggled against Cheltenham. Um, yeah, I know. Class. So I bet some other has looked at that and gone, "Yeah, break us down." No, De Bruyne break us down. And I think that could be one to watch tonight. Um, the West Brom are at home as well and uh, I'm not going to go into the home advantage because no fans and West Brom have been crap this year but um, again I think the way Samada sets up and the injuries City's, City's got I think that could be like either a nil-nil or maybe a shock result tonight because um, De Bruyne is a massive miss for that team as, 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 as we said before and I think it may, it's going to show tonight the fact that breaking these teams down you play these low blocks yeah. is hard without that creative player and also well, Ford is in You've got Phil Ford, you've got Gundogan. I'm going to say, I, I, brought, I, just, I just brought Phil Ford into my fantasy team and I do think he's the one that's going to break them down tonight. I think he's got that. He's obviously learned off the likes of De Bruyne and David Silva. And I think yeah. he's got. He's starting to get into that role. He's, been, he's the highest scorer this season. But I think he's, he's just got that eye for a pass. I think he's slowly developing that in his game. Uh, I don't. I hate him as a, as a person, as a player, but but you know, you've got to respect how, like, how good he actually is, you know. He's, he's he's very naturally gifted at football. The way he dribbles with the ball, um, he's slow. I do I do rate him. Say he's a city player. Um, Wednesday night, <clears throat> we're going to Burnley Villa. Might as well. Eight, six six o'clock at the turf. That is going to be such a hard I'm so game. So worried. You. I am so fucking worried. Like we we either gonna we're either gonna it's either gonna be like a, like a, a ball draw or like one one or it's it's gonna be like four nil Villa. Yeah. It can be either way. Like, I'm not confident at all. Like to be fair, we played when we played. I saw we were playing Fulham. It kicked off, and then I lost. We went on a walk, so I lost service on my phone. We come back two hours later. We've won three 0 I was like, how have we beat Fulham three 0 Like they're not. They're not fantastic. We're not great either. But the team we put out. I'm sorry, J. Rodriguez has to start. He has to. Yeah. I think. I think. To be honest, he'll start Wooden Barnes. I know he will. But I think Vidra and J-Rod deserve the chance. And they, they took it when they got played. You know, Jack Cork, apparently, were immense. Apparently, was a ve- he had a very good performance. Um, so, a lot of the players did, um, according to what I've, what I've seen and stuff. I did what, I've did i seen the goals and stuff. But, you know, I, I think they deserve the chance now. And 
if they don't get it, I don't know what else they can do. And I think Darch is being extremely stubborn if he does. If we get a result and he plays Wooden Barnes, I'll you know, I'll retract my statements. But he needs to start giving other players a chance. I agree. I agree. Um, we have to move through these. Um, tomorrow, Chelsea Wolves, six o'clock. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if Tuchel will be there for then. Um, he might be in the stands or something. He's not been then. appointed as yet. No, I, I know they were hoping to get him in so he could be for there for that game, but I don't. He hasn't. Yeah. I don't think he's been appointed, so I don't think he'll be there. Um, no, I, I, I again, appointed. that's a very difficult game for Chelsea. And um, but I've got a feeling. No, no, no. I don't. I don't think it is. You know, like they brought in, Wolves have brought in William Jose from Real Sociedad. Uh, and he's a very similar player to Raul Jimenez. Like, he's good in the air and stuff. But they, they're not really gelling as a unit this to this season. They're down near, I think yeah. they're 14th at the minute. They, they're just above us. Um, Wolves could slowly slip down. And they've got the quality to stay, to, to stay in the league, obviously. But you never know if results don't go their way and, and Jimenez ain't back soon. They, and they don't get uh, Willian Jose firing. They could slowly slip down the table. You know, they could get drawn in like Newcastle. I thought Newcastle was safe uh, a couple of weeks ago. And they've been awful and they've slowly slipped down. So, you know, they need to... I think if Wolves win that game, I'll be quite confident that they're going to... They'll, they'll survive. But it all depends on... It's all, all the pressure's on Chelsea now, in my opinion, to perform. I've got a feeling, though, Chelsea are going to have a really good performance tomorrow with that, that, that new manager thing. Um, I know he's not there, but it's just a feeling the club is like a reset. And I've yeah. experienced that as a United player. Having mercenaries in your club who aren't re- who's there for money, who... Uh, who do get your manager sacked. I think having them sort of plays out at Chelsea, there is going to be like a massive bounce for a bit. And I think they might get a result tomorrow. Much better if your team of Ernest scores a goal or two tomorrow. Um, but um, again, it's going to be a tough game. I think there'll be goals in it for both sides. Um, who I do like, who's, who's actually been really good. He doesn't score a lot of goals. He's, in, he's been quite unlucky. That young lad they've got, that young striker with big air for, Ch- for um, Wolves. Fabio Silva. Oh, I do Silva. Like him. I hate him. I hate him. Mate. He's got such good movement off the ball. The way he plays, he's quite strong. Um, he's been looking at to score more goals, to be fair. Um, but I think he'll start tomorrow. Um, yeah, we'll move that on. Um, we won't talk about Brighton Fulham. Dead game. Um, Everton-Leicester, that'll be a good game. Um, Albert Lewin's back. Everton at home as well. But I think Leicester might win that one. I think... I just yeah, like Madison Leicester. for the hat trick. He's in such a good form. Like, I don't think I've seen he's him like score as many goals. I I, I I think we're fantastic form. When they, I think it was last season before we got Bruno Fernandes, there was that debate if Imo Grealish was going to come to Man United, and I think I wanted him. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I think I changed my stance on that now. Um, but um, I think I think Leicester may win that one edgy. I think it'd be a two-one game. I think Leicester just got a bit more quality in the team, like throughout, in terms of the whole. I don't know. Squad. Well, to be fair, again, I don't. Who did Everton? I can't remember Everton played. Um, but oh, they played Sheffield Wednesday. Hamez got two assists. Calvert Lewin scored. Richarlison scored. You know, it's like, it's like that little bit of confidence that they've all they've all contributed might just give them a bit of a push to. Uh, I think it'll be a good game, but it might give them a push to win it. Um, I could easily see, you know, like a, like a six-goal thriller, you know, three-three or something like that. But I, th- I think both teams will definitely score. They're both on, on good form, so you know, be a good game to watch, definitely for a neutral. I think as a United fan, obviously, I'd want Everton to win to get to like make, make Leicester drop points. But I think for me, yeah. I, I can just see Leicester edging it for me in terms of like they've got the better defenders to keep a clean sheet um, for the team. They've got a better quality, but you never know because the two quality sides. Um, tomorrow, um, at, the, at the same time, we've got Man United versus Sheffield United at home. Um, this has got banana skin written all over it for me. Um, I think, I think we'll win it, um, but I've got to feel we're going to make it difficult for ourselves. We always do. And if we don't, I think that's a sign of a change in our team. I think we have come over through a lot of hurdles recently in terms of games we usually lose. We've been winning. Um, Sheffield United have been in bad form too. Um, but for me, looking at that game, it's just like a banana skin. They're in bad form. We're in good form. We're going to take it a bit easy and we're going to relax on them. But in my heart of hearts, I think we will beat them quite comfortably. Um, but again, you never know. Um, I think it's like a 3-0, 3-0, like 3-1 maybe. Yeah. Um, for some reason, David David McGoldrick always seems to score against us, so I think he might get a goal. Yeah, against the big teams in general, he scored quite a lot. He scored against you, Chelsea, Spurs, Liverpool. I think. Liverpool. Yeah. I mean, the biggest game of this midweek is Liverpool versus Tottenham versus Liverpool on Thursday, um, which will be a very yeah. good game. And I think. I don't know. I think Tottenham are just going to sit deep against Liverpool and let them come on to him. I think that might work. Oh, they, did last 
Yeah, I think I've got Tottenham for that one. I think Tottenham are going to beat them so at I. home. I think it actually could be a very shock score. I think it could be like a 3-0. 3-1, 4-1, something like that. Well, unless Liverpool get their act together, because I think Liverpool always beat Tottenham usually. But I think if Liverpool get their act together, I think they could win. But I think I've just got a feeling Jose Mourinho's watch that. Watch that United game when they played them at home. Watch that game, I think, yeah, just sit back against them and just counter-attack on them. Because that's what he does heavily. He heavily counter-attacks. And I think... Um, Got the place Yeah. Yeah, they have. And I think I'm going with a 3-1 Spurs. I, I would I really think... I would think if, to, be different, to be different, I'll say 3-2 Spurs. Fair enough. Saturday, any big games on? Right, we've got... Mm, we've got Arsenal, Man United. On a, on a, on Saturday, um, Arsenal, Five, no, Arsenal. Awesome. I'm very worried about this game. I'm incredibly worried about this game because Arsenal scare me. Even when they shit, they're like a bogey team for us. We can never beat them at the Emirates ever. Um, Apart from when Jesse Lingard plays, yeah, he's, he's a dance floor for him. Um, I think, I think, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna feel it's got a draw. I think. I want to say we're gonna win, but I can't because we never we never beat him at the Emirates. Um, I'm going to say 2-2 two, two. I'll say 2-1 two, two, one. Two, one Arsenal I think Thanks um, yeah. City have got Sheffield United They're going to twat them I'm not even going to ask you for a score on that 6-1 um, Sheffield United Yeah uh, Last day we'll speak about We've got Chelsea Burnley When's that? Is that, the, is that the next game for us? Yeah after Tomorrow It's Sunday for you Um <sighs> Stamford Bridge, 12 o'clock kickoff, Chelsea, Burnley. Oh, 3 0. Burnley. 3 0, Burnley. Thomas hey, Tuchel, hey we've got a record of beating him at Bridge. We beat him 3 2 last time. Well, not last time, but, you know, we do well. We actually do well at Bridge. It, I think last couple of times we've been like, I know we did 2 2 because Jeff Hendricks scored that absolute worldie. Um, we've beat him 3 2. And what were it last season? Can't, I can't remember what it were last season. Uh, I have no idea what it was season, actually, but uh, yeah, we've got a record of doing well at Bridge. So I think we, if it's, if two goes in by then, then we might struggle. But I, I'll back, I'll back it actually. Two, you know what? Two one, two one Burnley. Fuck it. And you've got Leicester versus Leeds. Oh, that'll be a really good game. For very, very high scoring. Yeah. What just what do you say? It's a high scoring game. It'd be nil nil. I think that's got five three written all over it to Leicester. That. Not a bad shout. I'll say 4-2 Leicester. And the last one... Oh, no, we'll speak about Spurs. Um, last, um, we've got second to last one. West Ham versus Liverpool. West Ham at home. Ooh. That'd be a good game. 3-1 Liverpool. Weirdly I'm enough. Gonna... I'm going to back, back West Ham, but I think I think Liverpool might get into a bit of form. I think 2-0 Liverpool. I think uh, that, that might be the time they start scoring goals again. Um, last one. Brighton versus Spurs. Uh, four one Spurs. <laughs> Maybe say four one Brighton then. Uh, yeah, I'm no, gonna go one go nil Spurs. Really? Yeah, that's what Mourinho. I've had Mourinho at my club. But he sits back against everyone. And Brighton, I think Brighton, Brighton, Brighton is going to come on to him, come on to him, come on to him. That's the way Graham Potter plays. He plays very expansive football. And um, that's what will happen. It may be. Ram's going to go with 1-0. I think Spurs are going to grind out a few results, you know, and I think they're going to get back into the top. Are they, are they, are they in the top three? Are they in top four, sorry? Currently. Let's have a look. Or is it Leicester? Uh, tables. Oh, no, Spurs are fifth at the moment. Um, yeah, so which could see if Spurs... Oh, yeah, Liverpool have got a game in hand on Spurs, so if Spurs win their game in hand, they go fourth. So Liverpool get them to fifth. I think Spurs could grind some results out to get top four this year. But you never know, this season's going to be fucking crazy. Um, I, ex- yeah. I, ex- I expect someone else to top the league except us this year. Um, you never know, they might Spurs might win the Europa League and get into Champions League football. Maybe. I think, I said, I said this, there's going to come a point this season where people are going to prioritise competition. And I think that's going to be very soon when the European competitions come back because the Europa League's a fucking tiring league to have. I think we're going to bin it off. I think we're just going to yeah. play the kids. I hope, I hope so. I hope Ollie doesn't think, oh, it's a trophy, we're going to try and win it. What I do, to be fair, we've got a good second side. We've got a good second team. We've got That's Death what he now. tried last year, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I I'd, I'd wouldn't have Rashford, Bruno, 
anywhere near that squad. Um, I'd play Tony Marshall in there, stuff like that. I'd, I'd, I'd go well. for, I want to see him play. Apparently, he's very good. Apparently, he's a very good footballer. I've never seen him play. Yeah. Apparently, apparently, like yeah, I'd prioritise the maybe the FA Cup and the league, but um, yeah, I think people are gonna start prioritising cups. I think that's when you're gonna start seeing teams drop off in the league and things start to like gaps start to happen. But yeah, Waddle, it's gonna be a very good week of football, and um, mm. we will try and we will make another video of these next week and review our um, predictions and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Like it. Subscribe the chat. Subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna say subscribe it and uh, like it. Subscribe it. Comment it. That's what I'm saying. Um, let, let, let us know in the comments your top four for the end of the season. Um, if you think we're chatting shit, tell us we're chatting shit. We won't agree we'll with back. you, but you can say it. Yeah, we won't agree with you. We know you're in your, your mum's little basement typing. Um, if you think we're all biased, tell us. Tell us we're biased. Interact with us. I'm definitely biased, yeah. Um, you can see my allegiances lie too. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, drop us a follow. All the Instagram stuff are in, are in the comments. What all stuff's in the comments. The mercenary stuff, the business stuff's in the comments. Go and check it all out. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye. See you later.